I'm going to go first to the membership dues reports. <clears throat> and we're just going to go down your success driver sheet so that you'll have it. You all know where to find that, right? It's under reports. And you go to the membership dues report, which is right here. Oh, it's not up. Oh, that's right. We unplugged it. There we go. Alright, we hit chapter and then we hit reports and here's the membership dues report. <clears throat> you put for the month that you want. Alright, what you want to make sure of, all of you are officers, so you know you have a term plus whatever your membership is. Some of you, like say Garrett has 11 months but Rob has five. So what you want to realize is that these mean that after you finish serving in September, Garrett will have, or Rob will have five months left on his membership where Garrett will have 11. The reason is, is because when they took over, it depends on how much time they had left on their membership before they had, before they served. So, Right. So whatever their membership is, when we roll them into a leadership position, requirement is they have to have at least one month on the books for us to be able to make them an officer. So it could be term plus one, which has happened to some people. And so the secretary treasurer, one of the mistakes secretary treasurers make is that they don't print this every month or look at it every month it doesn't stay the same, so look at it, because it's rolling. <clears throat> and so some of our leadership have thought, oh no, you're not due, you just served 12 months, you surely have 12 months. No, you don't. Depends, you served that whole 12 months, we didn't charge you, okay? It comes out of my pocket, I pay for your membership. So what happens is you serve, then when you finish whatever time you personally paid for, is there. If you only had one month left, that's all you get. You're up right away. If you have more, then you are. So don't mis misread this. Don't think it's wrong. It is really accurate when we put it in. Now, down here, it says April 1st. That really means, it says due, but it really means what? It's late. If Johnny doesn't pay by we used this last month, and he doesn't know he's being used all the time. But anyway, her last, last class. But if he doesn't pay by the end of this month, then what happens is he drops down to this. It's always there. You don't want people to drop here. So the new things in the system are this. We set the parameters of this, where all these little people are on there, that 60 days prior to their renewal, they're going to get an automatic letter from Connect, and so will you. And it'll say, you know, Chris, you are due to renew in this. And it will say this to you, see your secretary treasurer, or your, I think it says secretary treasurer. What happens is that means you have to set up an interview with your committee. You're not automatically renewed, you just can't go in and renew. As a matter of fact, the system won't let you do that on your own. It, re it, it just won't give you the screen. So you have to go in and you have to set up an interview with that. So what'll happen is if for some reason you go below and you don't renew, you'll drop into this category, which if you take that whole 60 days and your membership committee doesn't interview you or you don't, they interview you and then you don't pay and you drop down, then the system automatically assesses you an additional $25. I can't waive it, I can't change it, it's your fault. So you have to pay it, okay? This is the bad part. If some people, which they are prone to do, put off, put off, put off, 
and they don't renew and they should and they drop 60 days past they drop into the next category down here that says expired or dropped that means they automatically drop out of the system the system if they say oops I should have done that I wanted to stay in your chapter you've approved them and they go to renew they are charged like a new member which means they have to pay the 150 plus no way around it too bad for them if nobody should ever once they're past due we don't allow them back if you shouldn't not, allow them back right this is very important some of you are allowing people to stay in your chapter after they are due don't two reasons for that some people never intend to renew they just don't tell you they say, oh, I'm getting the payment, I'm getting the payment, I'm getting the payment. <clears throat> and they'll take all the free advertising you guys can give them. And then when they drop out of the system, literally I have gone to some chapters and said, why is this person still here? They're dropped. They're not on anything. Now they're on the Palms report, and if you just look at Palms, you are in error. You have to look at this, and you have to see if they're late or dropped. If they're late or dropped, they should not be attending. MLG and W turns your lights off if you don't pay, right? You gotta pay. So here we need that because we have had some chapters who unfortunately have been left holding the bag for room dues, food, free advertising, and then the person goes, oh, I don't have the money. As soon as they're late. Yep. They don't come back. That makes them pay, guys. They don't come back. They have a month. To pay. They have a month to pay. Right. Their normal. Right. Plus but they don't come back till they do. Not a promise. I'll pay next week, Chris. Right. Pay next week. You can come back. We have the person that's in that. I know. Yeah. And we've had several people that have. We had one right now, and I I saw an email saying, uh, well, I know. Uh, I saw an email saying, you know, I, I don't have the money right now. They're in the late steps. And I emailed the chapter and go, they shouldn't even be there. Because really, frankly, they don't even plan to renew because they don't have the money. She's not she Right, right. I don't, I don't think she is too. So, I mean, I don't have anything against them. It's just that you guys sometimes are paying for food and other things that you're fitting the bill for them. Okay? And it's not fair for you. So a way to check that, besides this report, always print it. The system up here, these people have already received a notice from Connect that says, you're up for renal, go you know, see your secretary treasurer, set up an interview. Okay, now, what happens when they're ready to renew? Let's look at <coughs> Johnny. When the membership committee interviews them, they can go to this, hit the little person, and you see what Connect provides, six months worth of Palms reports. The training details, you can click on it. It shows you whether this person has taken advantage of training, been to MSP, been to whatever. I mean, we even put in International Networking Week. If they attend something, we put it in there. I try to keep accurate records. If they sign it, I put it in. Brenda does. Okay? So you can know, are they really taking advantage of some things or not? And that's really, really important. We even give them a little MSP ribbon, right? Um, let's go back. <clears throat> Once the chapter, if the chapter approved them, this is the part some of you are missing. This is only for renewals, by the way. Renewals are all online no paperwork none because as soon as the chapter approves them and they click this button then they have to you see this lit up if he clicks on that it's the only way he can get his application period it's if you approved him okay if you did a conditional rather than that let's click it off it goes back to you can't get an application until you let us know what the conditions are, you put them on probation, whatever. You see this? He can't go into the application status. 
If a control letter has been sent, which means you're not accepting them back, there is no opportunity for him to go. <clears throat> if you click that instead, then you can pre-approve them and, and he gets an application. He fills it out online and then he pays online. Now one glitch, it, it says you can pay online and connect and it should go all the way through. However, connect right now does not allow checks. We in our region allow checks. So if they have a check, or even if they have another, send them over to BNI MidSouth to pay. But it's still no touching. You don't touch anything. They renew and pay online. There's two buttons. Debbie. <clears throat> They put that in themselves. I don't put CEUs in. I tell them that too. Yeah, if, if we put the MSP on there, they get a ribbon for attending, but they don't get CEU credits. Yeah, I mean, they do, but they have to put it in themselves. Right? Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, okay. Your payment cannot be processed. Because um, <laughs> I just paid for somebody's membership. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Somebody got a free membership. Okay, if you went over here to these guys, out of the 60-day window, what will happen is this screen will come up that says this member's renewal is outside normal time. It means they don't pay it. Okay. Now, the only way that will change is the dual dues is due to go up. It goes up about every two years. It'll go up in June. It'll go up $35. So BNI always allows you to pay early. So that button will probably end up being lit for a short period of time. Okay? But if they're out of their 60-day window of renewals until we hit the button, they can't pay. Any questions on that part? Okay. You must hit the button. If you say if you send them to pay and you have a physical application and you go, hey, he paid online, he's got this app, we can't do anything because you haven't hit the button that says you approved them, okay? People, people are aware of, like, if there's a rating you can go ahead and lock in We'll tell them. Yes, you can say that it's going up in June, and if you want to pay early, don't do it yet because it's not set up to do that. They'll turn the button on when it's ready. That's why it's not lit. Um, okay, the other thing I want you to know about, the way that you, as a secretary treasurer, you have the responsibility to do this. Go to reports and chapter. If you look at the Palms report, the Palms report puts people on there and it doesn't remove them, even if you do, for six months. So it keeps them on whatever the six-month period that they need to be on to keep your thank you for closed business going in the system. It's the only thing. So you have to know whether or not your chapter's roster is up to date by going here, or an easier way is to do the meeting notes report. I print this before I go to any chapter. You can quickly scan this. And if you see somebody's name on here that shouldn't be on there, and you go, hey, they're out of our chapter, it means you probably didn't go over to BNI Mid-South and go down here to update <clears throat> the chapter roster. It's in, it's in bigger letters, so you can see it. You click on it. You put the name of the people you want to remove from the roster. And this is important. Why and when did they leave? We cannot remove them if you just tell us to. We can't remove them for any reason other than what you put in here. Yeah, Garrett. <laughs> I don't like you, so I'm going to remove. That's why we have to know who put it in. This is required. We have to know it's a BNI member, not some other person putting it in. I want to get rid of my competition, right? Important for this reason is when you update this chapter roster, it takes them out of the roster, off the website, so that you're no longer advertising for somebody who's not there, which means it shows your seat as open. 
So if somebody leaves you that's a, your computer guy, it's, it's going to show that you have an opening, right? And it also helps because then they don't go into drops and late and all that other. You've taken them out and you've removed them from your roster. So you must do this all the time. If you think you've done it and we haven't removed it for some reason, sometimes when we hit submit, this may not go all the way through. It's in a Google Doc system. So once in a while there's a glitch. Just email the office and say, hey, I did this on such and such a date. Please go back and see if you, you know, if you have off. <clears throat> I don't know what I hit, but anyway, this is a great way to see who's all updated on your chapter. Oh, it's on BNI Mid-South right here. Right there. BNI Mid-South. BNI Mid-South is kind of like your driver. You can go there and go anywhere. Up here means you go to connect. <clears throat> you can pay renewals. Now, the new member process is still paper. I gave you the form for that. It will eventually go paperless, but it's not at this point because BNI has to move everything in stages because you have 60 countries and 24 languages to move. So it, they figured renewal had more people, so they did that first, okay? But you still pay the dues. Now, one thing about recollecting, we cannot process. So if you, if you don't follow the directions, and you have somebody have an application and they pay before you approve them. Your VPs in the last thing were shown where to go to put a pending member in. You need to do that and make sure they do that so that our office knows there's a pa some paperwork coming. And we can see it's a pending member. It'll actually show up on your dues report in the new member section, it'll say pending. So then we go, oh, we're expecting paperwork. However, if you mess up and you think, well, they paid online, but you don't get us the app, it says pay, it doesn't mean pay. It means authorize. That's the term, we, we just couldn't put authorize your membership. So we have to pay. But what happens is if they go in and pay before you get us together with the paperwork, they can pay all they want, it goes nowhere. It stays in the system for seven days. We don't touch it legally until we have their application with their payment, with a signature. We can't process it. So they never get charged. And we have people swear up and down, why pay? I say, well, then prove it to me because I, we didn't charge you. So I have them go back, look at their, you know, the Connect will send uh, an email to you saying you paid. But and you have to have them save that. It will also, they can print the screen that shows their confirmation. Either way, we don't care which. But then this is where you guys have to come in on this. You have to make sure that you put those two together, application, payment, never apart. Scan them, email them together so Brenda gets them at the same time. Because we can't reconcile <clears throat> without it. Sometimes people don't put their chapter name on it. Sometimes they don't, their company check. And in the new system, they have a place where you put a company payment versus a regular payment. That's really important. Because the company, if the company pays, they own the seat. Doesn't mean you're obligated to accept a new person from the company, it just means they have the first right of refusal <clears throat> to that seat. You don't have to accept them. And there's things we could talk about on there, and if we have time at the end, I'll do that. But we have to know. If it's a name change, like somebody comes in, and I quit the company, and, and somebody new comes in, same company, different person, they have to put in an app, but they don't have to pay, except a $25 transfer fee to change the information. But put at the top of the application, name change or name change transfer but you have to give us who it changed from because sometimes you just assume Brendan knows everything 
And she doesn't have a clue who's in your chapter, who was there before. So she doesn't know, know who this person's changing the name. It could be anybody in there. It just means you've got to tell her who to take out and who to put this person in for. So give us as much detail as possible. Otherwise, when you're yelling at us for not having the person in the system, and we are, and she, she shows me, <clears throat> I emailed this person on such and such a time, they never answered me. I emailed them there, they never answered me. And then you're screaming, saying, the office is not answering me. And she's like, I am, I am. And so she keeps track of when she emails you back. So read the emails, number one, read our emails. Especially if you need something, you gotta read what we write back. Otherwise, we, it just doesn't magically appear, okay? All right, another thing, any, any questions on like new versus renewing? And I gave you the document, it's a checklist, okay, so you know where it is. <laughs> No, nothing on um, the renewal part. They, it does have to have that because there's not, they're not renewing, they're just changing names. So we do have to have new paperwork because it's a new email, it's a new name, it's a new whatever. We have to put all that in the system and change, take out the one who left, put the new one. Right, uh -huh, with the $25. And they can go in here and pay $25. All right, now, the other thing that you want to be able to do <clears throat> is you want, with your speaking schedule, some of you are really super good about requiring your members to go to MSP within that time. Some of them, literally, I had one member who didn't come in an entire year. Do you realize you're hurting them terribly if you do that? Um, they have proven that if you go to MSP the, the fastest and best way to retain your members is to get them there within their first 30 days. Now in the case of like Jackson, I don't have, um, here you have no excuse, we have it once a month. Jackson is out of the way, so I have to set up a special training for them. That's the way Corinth is, it's the way Oxford is. So we give them a little break, but at the same time, the longer I, I wait to go up there, I'm hurting their members, so I tr I'm trying to you know, get on a routine of going up. But you want to make sure, I know Alan's chapter's real good at this, they won't let them speak at all. Please don't. Because it's a good way for you to hold that leverage on them and don't lose track of that. You, uh, you get an email from me whenever anyone attends and, we put, and I also put it in, click if they've registered. Make sure they register. If they register, it'll send them a reminder email and that way they get a reminder. <clears throat> if I ever had to change something, they'll get a, an update. But what I do at MSP or Advanced is I can just check mark anybody who goes, submit it, and boom, it's done in the system. And Brenda doesn't have to redo it. And I can add people at the last minute. So it's much easier if they register. If they come at the last minute, it's okay, I can put them in. But I would much rather have them register so everybody's you know, in there. But please don't let them speak until they actually go so to training. They don't their presentation, right, right. right. Um, Except the launching pad speech. They do that. Everybody gets a launching pad speech when they come in, which means the week after they're inducted, which hopefully should be the week they're inducted, they do new member orientation. The next week, they're helped to do a launching pad speech, which means they get two minutes to explain their business in a little more detail during the weekly presentation part, 60 second part. It, it. Yeah, but you know that there is a policy in there that says you can be subject to having your seat opened if you don't go to MSP. So that is a leverage that chapters can use because some people are darn stubborn. I would say up to 90, but no more, because I'll, I'll make sure I get there. <clears throat> the thing of it is that you have to do, and this is all part of in advance, that the new member orientation, the president should sit down and say, there's an MSP here and an MSP here. Which one are you going to go to? Because the policy says you have to be there. So it's an expectation on the front end. A lot of people don't know. There's never mentioned to them.
And that if you don't say they have to, they won't. So you have to tell them it's part of their expectations. Part of what they signed on their application, by the way, if you look at it, Bill. You did, you had the most, yeah, out of all that chapter. They, they had the, the large portion of the room was. Yeah. Um, room fees is something some of you have a lot of problem with. People are late, people don't pay. And you have, you can, you can plaster their name in red lights and blinking lights and they still don't know. They still don't pay. I'm going to recommend to you, you can do what you want, but same with everything else. You have to talk to them and say, do you realize your name up in lights kind of thing on the board as not paying reflects on your reputation as a professional, which it does. I mean, it's just all part of it. If you're delayed four months on your room dues, it doesn't say much about how you follow through, right, realistically. So you need to be honest about that and tell them, because some people think it's funny. I mean, they just don't think about it. Oh, I forgot. Oh, I forgot. Oh, I forgot. But you're still having to pay the bill. We actually had one chapter who went bankrupt. Literally. Seriously. They, their room fees went up. They didn't adjust for the fact that they lost some members, number one. Then they had a bunch of delinquent people, and literally they ran out of money. So this is what I'm going to recommend to you. First, talk to them. I'm all about talking. First, give them a chance to pay and then say, if you don't, you can't come back until you do. Because we're paying for your room that you're meeting in for free while we're footing the bill. They are professionals. And somewhere along the line, we got to draw a line that says, act like one. But I'm all about telling them first and being fair. But a lot of times, we had one chapter who got left hanging for almost a year's worth of dues. Person didn't pay, then didn't renew. You'll never get that back. So treat them like a professional. If they don't pay their rent, guess what? They don't have an office. It's just the way it is, OK? <clears throat> the end statement that's in your verbatim that says read verbatim, I'm going to suggest something to you. When it says read verbatim, if you quote unquote read it, I want you to know that I don't want you to just go, I'm required to read this. Uh, the dues is that, you know, as you know, that it's so, it's so bad. You read that whole thing without even engaging these people. I heard somebody told the whole thing the other day. They didn't read one word, but they said everything in there. It's because they genuinely just said, we'd like you to join. This is how you pay. It's as easy as this. Blah, blah, blah. But they never, this is what you have to do, and this is how you do it. And, you know, because nobody will believe you if you just read the darn thing without any feeling and without any emotion. So please put read in quotes <laughs> that you don't read it. How many of you introduce your speakers? Please all do. I've been to chapters where they go, OK, now for the 10 minutes mark, Cardona. And you just have to get up. It's really important that you do a good job of introducing. It's sort of like that <clears throat> warm-up point where the person gets a little bit of a warm introduction while they walk up. Um, one of the things I don't want you to do is sit there and ask them their bio questions. So where were you born? And how many children do you have? And what's your dog's name? Don't do that, please. Because it takes more time. And literally, the introduction is part of that time. You cannot take more time than it takes them to do they're 10 minutes. So just be a nice, warm, welcoming introduction. Secretary Tre Treasurer is responsible using the bio sheet. But if you feel uncomfortable and you can't make it entertaining or interesting, then pick somebody who can. Okay? Per designated person. <clears throat> so whatever way you do it, you need to introduce your speakers. The launching pad speech I think I covered. And I'll show you where this is, because I want you to make sure that you understand it. Um, the value of the online academy is next. And I want to show everybody this today, because unfortunately, you're not using it. 
Let me tell you the difference of what this online academy is. Let me see the hands of anybody who's actually been in it. Oh, you're so wonderful compared to some of the other people. Let me tell you how this changes. Here's BNI Connect. Here's the online academy, never the two meet. They're two separate systems. The Connect is a BNI platform. The online academy is a Massachusetts platform created by directors in Massachusetts and New Hampshire in that area. Tim Roberts is the driver of that. He's an executive director, you'll see him in a minute. Their team developed this for the training of their own leadership teams and members. But then, after they had some success with it, <coughs> they showed it to BNI. BNI allows them to open it up to other directors with a price, right? So they brought it to the conference, and if we like something and they offer it to us, we can purchase it. I looked at it, I sat down and, and went through it with one of their guys, and what I liked about it was two things. It's online, so people can't complain. I have to go to training, that's the only place I can go. I forget my stuff. Now you have no excuse. It's online, you can watch it at 2 a.m., you know, whatever way. And we are trying to load all of the things you need for your role in there, okay? So that's number one. But what I really liked about it is I could modify it because different directors do different things. We are allowed to modify our region according to our personalities, the way our vision is for our chapters. We typically do a lot of the same things, but there's variations because we're different people. The only thing that we can't change are like the BNI agenda, the policies that are in the policy manual, things like that we can't change. So I know the fundamentals are in here. However, I can go in the back door of this and change whatever I want. So let me show you what the newest course is. You have, of course, your secretary treasurer role. <clears throat> However, there is a role that's called member training. Our goal is to get it in the hands of every single member. So when you click on it, this is what comes up. It's an actual mentoring program for your new member. The goal is, is to retain your new members and to retain your existing members and only rid yourself, your chapter, of the ones who just don't want to do stuff. They don't want to work. They don't want to take the time, but they just want your referrals. They're not a part of your professional business. Remember, this is your business. But this is for your new members and for actually for any member. And I want to show you one of the things. This is the mentoring program opening. <clears throat> Do you see the mentee pack and the mentor pack? So there is actually a way that your president is going to start showing this to them. And then your mentor coordinator is going to pick up and help them with it. And it, it goes for six full weeks, step by step. You do this on week, week one, you do this on week two. So they're helped. But here are the professional videos that Tim and his team did. And I love them because to me, they are very professional. I'll just show you one of them. all the way up. Okay, well, you can listen to it yourself, but it's really professional, but I want to show you something here so I don't run you over time. On the, on the uh, member training, which is the whole thing, 
It has different modules and it goes down. There's actually in this program section one, <coughs> there are three or four modules in that. Every single thing you need to know, open networking, new member launching pad speech, BNI slips, online entries. This goes through, and this is longer, it goes through every single detail of putting an app uh, or slip online. So even your existing members can learn from this, how to put their referrals, thank you for closed business, why, what it does for your business. It's all the whys and the whatevers. All of that's in there. They can watch, oops, okay. They can watch those. One more thing on here. What I added to it, how many times do your members say, I don't, what's tier one, what's BNI, what's MSP, right? We speak a foreign language to them <clears throat> if we don't explain it. So I added this right here. It's all of our language, everything we say that they could possibly hear in our chapter, I put it in here for them so that they know what in the heck we're talking about and they don't think we're speaking some foreign tongue. Down below that, there's a lot more videos. Some of these are done by Dr. Meisner, so they get to see him. There's all kinds of things in here that they can use to help them get going. Please make sure you review it <clears throat> as a member because they're going to ask you things and the disconnect between a professional chapter and one that doesn't display professionalism is when your new member comes and says, what about this? And you go, um, I don't know anything about that. And you're a leader. Don't do that. Watch this. It's very entertaining. I was so excited when I found it because they added it from the time I was studying it. Brenda and I are working very hard to add all the different modules that we need so that you will have one resource where you can go click and go, I need a document for my president thing and I got it. I need a document for my secretary treasurer, I got it. We're trying, it's gonna take us some time because it's real laborious on the back end to correct and to add and to do whatever. So it's module by module. <clears throat> Any questions on that? Is that a pretty good tool? I think it's awesome. I really think it's awesome. One last thing I want to um,